Hey everybody, RPG here. Today we're going to do a full demo and review of the AE light gun controller. So we're going to take a closer look at the gun itself. We'll go over the different functions and features. We'll also highlight what is included with this gun when you purchase it brand new. And then we're going to fully test it out. We're going to jump into RetroPie and Botticera, dive into two games on each to test out the performance of this light gun. And then we're going to jump back out here and I'm going to talk to you guys about what I liked and what I didn't like about this particular light gun controller. So let's get started. All right, so when we get our AE light gun controller inside your package, you're obviously going to have your AE light gun controller here, but you're also going to get two cables. I only have one visible right now. The other ones are already hooked up to my PC, but you're gonna get two cables, which go to the two sensors that come with your AE light gun controller. So these are the sensors that you're going to need to set up and mount to your TV or monitor. These are what's going to pick up the movement and uh, controls from your AE light gun controller. So these are crucial to the performance of your light gun controller here. And I do want to kind of show you guys around these particular sensors here. They connect right here. You have a little connection. So you'll take these cables and they'll actually connect just like this. And then the other end of this is a USB connection, which you can see uh, right here. And that's going to connect to either your Raspberry Pi or your PC, whatever you're connecting your AE light gun to. So um, you're going to be utilizing two USB connections for the sensors alone. You're also going to be utilizing one for the light gun itself, which you can see has a cable right here. And the other end to that cable is located right here already in my PC. So three total USB ports per AE light gun controller. So let's take a closer look at this light gun controller here and go over all the different functions and features. All right, so let's take a closer look at the AE light gun controller itself. So just looking at this really nice to sleek design to it, a uh, little bit large compared to some of the other light gun controllers out there, but I do like the feel to it. Very light in the hand, so you don't have to worry about getting fatigued after playing for long periods of time. This is really light and uh, really well made as well. There's nothing flimsy or cheap about this. Um, no bend to it or anything like that. Just feels really nicely made all around. So we have a bunch of different buttons on here. So each of these buttons can actually be mapped and configured to whatever functions you really want on here. So let's say you're playing a game like Terminator 2 Judgment Day, where you have obviously the trigger function for shooting, but you also have that grenade launching function. You could program that to any of these buttons. So if you like the feel of, let's say this button just going up from the handle with your thumb, you can program it right there. You could do it with this one, which you'd probably hit, um, my thumb doesn't reach, so you'd probably hit by holding the gun, you know, with two hands and, you know, you're shooting like this and then just hit it like that with your other hand to uh, enable that secondary function. So a bunch of different options here. We have four buttons here, one here, um, another button up front here. There is a button under here, which is actually your calibration button. So this is what you're going to hit to go through your calibration process. So you'll just push that button in and this one doesn't have as much function to it. It's actually just like a little almost like a recessed reset button. So when I push this, I feel the movement, but it doesn't click or anything like that because it's not a button that you'll be using in actual gameplays. Um, we have some additional buttons back here as well. Um, these are pretty similar to the one up here. Um, not really sure what these are for yet, but um, beyond that, the other side here doesn't have any buttons. This is going to be where we have our screw heads. So if we had to open this up and access anything, that's where we would do that. No buttons whatsoever on this side. Everything's going to be on the left side. So looking underneath, you can see we have our cable connection right here, but again, no functions or features really underneath. Uh, we do have an LED display here. Don't believe there's any functionality to this. It's just going to be the um, when you power this on, it'll light up and it'll have the AE logo here, which is again, right below it as well. Up here at the top, we do have a um, little piece here where we can add a site. Now I have heard that they're going to be adding an attachment here. I'm not really sure if that's going to be something that really uh, improves the performance of the light gun itself, or if it's just going to be kind of a cool little accessory to add onto your um, light gun. 
Not really sure about that. I've just heard some vague information that they were planning on doing some sort of a scope or um, something like that. But again, not sure if that's going to really um, affect the performance in any way, shape or form of this light gun, but would be kind of a cool little um, appearance at the very least. But um, that's pretty much it in terms of the functions and features looking at the light gun itself. But again, really well made, really um, fits in your hand nicely. Great action just pulling this without even being, you know, obviously powered on. You can see the LED light is not lit up. So this isn't into my uh, PC or anything yet, but just pulling that trigger, really nice action on here. Super, super easy. It's really a hair trigger. Um, not something that's going to cramp up your finger or anything like that, like some of the other light gun controllers out there. So really like the action on this. Definitely can't wait to plug this in, get it set up and test it out. So let's jump into this on Botticera first, followed by RetroPie. All right, so we're jumping into Terminator 2 Judgment Day. So it's tracking really nicely right now. Uh, it did take me quite a bit of uh, tries to get it to calibrate this well, but uh, aim is pretty much spot on right now. Really happy with that. So I have it mapped right now, so the trigger is obviously the trigger, and then I have the button right here on the side, which is going to be my grenade launcher. So if I just aim it, you can see I'm able to launch those grenades just by hitting that side button there. And you can map that to any of the buttons on the actual light gun. It doesn't have to be specific to the one that I mapped it to. Again, I mapped it to this one right here. Um, you can do it to you know any of these that are right here by your thumb as well. Those might be a little bit easier for some people. I'm holding with two hands, so I have no issue at all just hitting that with my thumb as I go. Uh, I can do this also with one hand if I want. You know, it's tracking nice enough where you know I, I don't to steady this. It's a really light gun too, so um, you know it's not an issue at all holding it up or anything like that. Now this isn't one of the games where it's really hard to uh, aim because this is pretty much like a drag and shoot sort of situation here. You have unlimited bullets, so I'm pretty much just holding the trigger and then just you know moving the gun like this back and forth. So. Not a really um, precise light gun game by any means. Not that that's a bad thing, but it's worth mentioning for sure. So let's jump out of this one and let's jump into a different light gun game where you have to be a little bit more precise with your aiming. All right, so we're gonna jump into Virtua Cop 2 for Sega Saturn. So let's jump into beginner mode here and we'll give this a go. This one you have to be a little bit more precise with. It's not your um, drag and shoot sort of game like uh, Terminator. Uh, Judgment Day was. Or Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Let's go. Alright, so this is a shoot off screen to reload sort of game. Tracking the uh, off screen shots really nicely. A little hard to see the uh, crosshairs, but that's the game. That's not anything to do with the light gun. really is um, calibrated nicely on here. I'm able to aim exactly where I want to. Biggest issue with this game is the crosshair color. It just blends in with the background perfectly. So it makes for it to be, um, you know, really challenging. Good thing I missed that guy, he was a good guy. Um, really challenging to actually see the crosshairs. But um, in terms of the performance of the light gun, it's really nice. Yeah, the, the calibration is really nice. It does take uh, quite a few tries to get the calibration to um, set up as nicely as it is right now. I will mention that because uh, that's one thing that I didn't anticipate it taking quite as many tries as it did to actually get it calibrated um, as well as it is right now. But 
Let's jump out of this now and let's jump into a couple games on RetroPie. So this was brought to Sarah. We're gonna jump into RetroPie. All right, so we're gonna check out Operation Wolf today with the AE light gun on the Raspberry Pi 4 running RetroPie. So let's add our coins here. We'll add five credits and we'll hit our start button on our AE light gun. You can see aiming the gun at the screen. Calibration is working perfectly here. Tracking my movement 100%. So let's get started. Not great at this game, so bear with me. Probably not going to last very long at all, but let's track the movement and the overall performance here. So you can either hold your um, trigger on this game, or you can obviously just, you know, pull it individually for each shot, whatever you want to do. Um, this has unlimited bullets, so we don't have to reload or anything like that. Those grenades get me every time. My offense isn't bad, but my defense is absolutely terrible here. I actually cleared the first scene there, not too bad. Um, not by much though, I was about to die, but um, let's try the next level. I'm sure that's not gonna last long at all. So we are going into the jungle, it seems. I haven't played this in forever. I don't even remember the uh, levels. So we're hitting boats here instead of helicopters and all of that. That's it, died. All right, so performance here is great though. Tracking and everything for the calibration, perfect. Functionality of the gun itself, perfect. So let's jump out of this game and jump into another one. All right, so the next game we're gonna jump into is Alien 3 The Gun from Sega, one of my favorite light gun games for the 90s. Uh, this is early 90s too, which is um, super advanced for the uh, time period, I think. So let's add our coins. Again, just using the side button here. Um, this one I've actually set as my, um, this one has a grenade function to this game, so I have that as this button up here. Um, let's hit, oh, start is our trigger, I believe, for this game, right? Perfect. All right, so let this load in, and this is one of those games, kind of like the Terminator 2 Judgment Day game, where you pretty much just pull the trigger, you don't have to reload off screen or anything like that. You just pretty much, um, pull the trigger and drag it along to aim. It's not a super precise, precise game. Um, not that you're not precise, but it's not one of those like where you have to aim at certain areas like uh, Virtua Cop 2, which we checked out for Botticera. So really love this game. Really love the movement on here. So let's try that grenade function here. There's the grenade. Should have waited till I actually had people. Or aliens, I should say, here. So let's blast them with the grenade. Perfect. Works great. I always forget you're supposed to lay off the trigger a little bit to regain the power. 
So a game like this, you don't have to necessarily you know, pull the uh, trigger and hold it the whole time. I always do, but um, not the best way to go, apparently. So for individual areas, you can just you know, pull the trigger as a one-off sort of function. This would have been a great spot to save the um, grenade launcher for. Definitely a lot going on in this game, but this one is a lot of fun. All right, so we've gone in and we've taken a closer look at the AE light gun. We've gone over to all the functions and features of the gun itself. We've also taken a closer look at what the setup process entails for the specific setup here with the AE light gun. We've also dove into two different emulation platforms, both RetroPie as well as Botticera, jumped into a handful of games on each. So we fully tested this out to check the performance of the AE light gun. So now it's time to jump back and talk about what I like and what I don't like about this particular light gun. So first and foremost, let's talk about the gun. The feel of this gun is absolutely phenomenal. I love the size, I love the scale of it. Um, it's a little bit smaller than some of the light guns out there, but it is bigger than the Wii Remote light gun casing. So um, it's really a nice feel. It fits your hand really nicely here. The layout of the gun is great. All the different functions and features on here are absolutely perfect. I love the fact that there's so many buttons on here that you can custom map it to what your preference is. So we obviously have the trigger here. That's going to be universal. Obviously all light guns, you're gonna map the trigger function the exact same way it's gonna to go to the trigger. But some games have multiple functions that we need to map. So a game like Alien 3 The Gun, for example, you have the trigger function, which goes to the trigger. We also have that grenade launching function, which you have to map to a button on your AE light gun. So the fact that we have, what, one, two, three, four, five, five buttons right here on the side of the gun, gives you so many different options here. And there's also additional buttons on the gun, but that's where most people are probably going to be mapping the uh, functions for your light gun games. So originally I started mapping it to this button right here. I figured I'll be playing with one hand. I could just grab my other hand, tap it with my thumb, tap it with my finger, no problem. I ended up switching over to this button right here, which is right in the middle of the handle. So when I'm holding the gun like this, all I have to do with my thumb is just lift it up and tap that button and you're able to do it all one-handed. You don't even need to bring your other hand into the uh, picture here. So you can do this however you want, and that's what's so cool about the AE light gun. You can customize this to your personal preference, your style, and what you prefer in-game. So if you're playing a game like I was, I started with that first button, and I started thinking, hey, maybe this isn't the best button to assign. I ended up switching it over, and you can, again, just custom tailor it to whatever you're into. So love that about this. This is the only light gun out there where you can do that. There's other light guns out there that have a couple different buttons, but for the most part, you don't have the same amount of options that you have on the AE light gun. So love that function and uh, feature of this. But um, in addition to that, the color here, the color scheme obviously being black, I actually think that they call this like a silver or like a, I forget exactly what it's called, but it doesn't look silver to me. I guess when you look at it from an angle, the way the light hits it, it does have like a silvery sort of shimmer to it. But um, I look at it, I think it's black. Looking at it from your angle, I think you guys think it's black too. But um, it looks really neat. It doesn't have a red tip on it. I'm not a stickler for stuff like that. Um, but I know some people are. I'm sure that you can get, uh, you know, orange tip or red tip, whatever you want to call it if that's what you're looking for on here for safety reasons, because if you ever took this out, obviously the uh, cable is a dead giveaway, but if you ever took this out of your house and we're waving it around, I almost guarantee you, you're gonna have some problems because just looking at it, you know, up close, it's a little oversized, but you know, a good distance away, this could easily be mistaken for a legitimate firearm. So don't take it outside. That's probably the safest bet. If you just keep it inside your house, you don't have to worry about the red tip, orange tip, whatever you wanna call that tip. Um, but beyond that, I like the feel of it. You know, it has a nice fit to my hand. Everybody's got different size hands, but I think for the most part, everybody's gonna like the way that it feels. Now the trigger action is another thing I wanna talk about, about the AE light gun itself. It's got a really nice trigger, just takes a little bit of pressure. Uh, you can even do it with like the tiniest bit of your, the tip of your finger, just, you know, pulling it back like that. So what that means is it's not going to fatigue your finger. You're not going to get cramped up playing a game for a long period of time 
which is an issue with a lot of other light guns out there. All right, so now we're gonna move on from the actual light gun itself, and I wanna talk about the setup process. So when comparing the setup process for the AE light gun to other light guns out there, it's comparable, but it's actually easier if I had to say um, compared to the majority of the light guns out there. You don't need to have any additional software or drivers installed in order to get this up and running. It is plug and play, meaning that you literally just take the two sensors, plug them into your Raspberry Pi or computer, and the uh, USB connection here, which is right here for the light gun itself, plug those directly into your computer or Raspberry Pi, and you're able to get this up and running. You don't need to go in and go into your terminal and you know add drivers or software or anything like that, like some of the other light guns out there. So in that regard, it's really simple and pretty basic to set this up. Now I have seen other review videos out there on the AE light gun that say, you just have to plug this in and you're up and running and into a game in two minutes. That's a little bit optimistic. I've seen a bunch of people say that. I actually have a setup tutorial for both RetroPie and Botticera with this light gun. And in that process, it took me two tries to actually calibrate this, which is really good. I'm not saying that as a negative thing, but when I set this up for the first time without cameras rolling, it took me literally 25 times to get the calibration right. 25 times, believe it or not, sounds like that, oh, that must have taken you forever. It really didn't take that long. It took me about 10 to 15 minutes, um, but what I kept doing was I kept calibrating it and I did everything right. I did it exactly as I've done it in my tutorial video where it worked on the second try. It's just one of those things you have to make sure that you're a certain amount of feet away from your sensors, which are attached to your TV or monitor. So it's just kind of one of those things you just have to do trial and error and figure out exactly where you need to be standing. Um, as well as of course, there's some luck involved too because the first time getting anything set up with any computers or anything like that when there's sensors involved, it just takes a little bit longer sometimes. So the calibration process is pretty basic. You literally just hit this button right here in front of the trigger and it gives you a uh, cursor that you have to shoot at in your top left corner. So you shoot at that one and now it moves that cursor down to the bottom right corner. You have to shoot at that one. And then you have to track the movement of your light gun on screen and make sure that the cursor on screen is moving evenly and there's no cutouts or lags or anything like that. So the first time that I did it, you know, I was able to shoot both points, move it around, and it was a little bit um, laggy and just like it would move, you know, in a circle and then it would just like shoot across the screen. So stuff like that, it's not going to fly. So you have to recalibrate and it took me literally 25 times. Not a big deal though. It's not really a downside to this, but I do want to make sure that the information is out there from my experience at least where it's not a two minute process the first time anyways. You know, if you have to go back in and recalibrate it or, you know, change things around or just, you know, refresh your calibration for a game, then it's usually much quicker. But first time, don't plan on, on you know, plugging this into your PC or uh, Raspberry Pi and jumping into a game in two minutes. It's just not gonna happen the majority of the time. So last thing I wanna talk about about the actual setup process for the AE light gun is the sensors that come with this. So you get two sensors. This is one of them right here. You have two connections. You connect directly into a cable and then that cable connects into your computer that you're running these on. So the downside to this, and this is really the only issue that I have with the AE light gun controllers is the fact that you have no way to actually mount this to your TV. They literally just give you these two sensors, no uh, casing or mount or anything like that. So you have to figure out how you're gonna stick this onto your TV. And the fact that you have to stick it to your TV without a mount is a problem. So I figured, you know what, I'll get some double-sided sticky tape, stick it directly to the uh, frame around my TV. Uh, the downside to that, of course, is it looks pretty hideous. It doesn't look really nice. It's gonna leave a residue on the outside of your TV, which I'm here in my office here. I don't share this TV in here with anybody else in my family, but if I told my wife I was gonna stick two sensors with double-sided sticky tape to our living room TV, guarantee you she would tell me another place I could stick these. So luckily I didn't have to go down that road. I used it here in my office, uh, again, by myself, nobody else uses this. So I do have residue all over my TV, which I have to scrape off or wipe off or whatever. Um, not thrilled about that, but I ended up using double-sided sticky tape and every single time after about five minutes of playing, they fell down. Problem with this is when you stick it up, it holds this perfectly fine. 
but it doesn't hold the weight of the cable, which is only on one side. So the cable connects over here and it drags it down slowly as you're playing the game, it just falls. So I ended up going with some, um, a 3M product that was double-sided sticky tape, but it was like two parts that Velcro together. So I used that, it worked okay, and then it started doing the same thing. The other thing about this is when you plug these into your computer and start using it, these actually warm up. They don't get hot, they're not gonna burn you or anything like that, but as they warm up, they start to loosen that adhesive bond on the double-sided sticky tape or the um, Velcro strips, whatever you're using to stick these up with. So as it warms up and it starts to you know, warm up that adhesive bond, it starts to fall again. So I literally had to reinforce this with packing tape, which also left residue on the frame of my um, 52 inch TV over here. So not thrilled about that either. Now I have seen people on YouTube putting together some different ways to actually mount these to their TV, whether they mount on top or below um, with a 3D printer. The majority of us probably don't have a 3D printer and for the amount of money that we're paying to get an AE light gun, I don't think we should have to start figuring out uh, ways to 3D print you know, brackets or mounts to mount these onto our TV. So in my opinion, the way that they present these to you and they give you these two sensors, it seems like if you just looked at this, you would think that, that it's a prototype. You wouldn't think that it's a finished final product. So I think they really need to figure out another way to give you sensors that you can easily mount and that you know don't look like they are just a computer board that's been kind of modified and thrown together. So I know it's really early with AE light guns. I know they haven't been around for a long time and this is a really early stage. So, you know, we'll cut them some slack there. It's not a reason to necessarily pass on their product, but it is something that uh, warrants being addressed. The fact that the sensors do need some serious work um, in regards to appearance and how you mount them to your TV or monitor. The performance of them, however, is perfect. You know, once you get through that calibration process and when you're calibrating, don't settle. So the first time I started calibrating, I calibrated maybe five, six times and I was thinking, eh, the movement's not bad. Not bad is not good. So you don't wanna settle for not bad. You wanna make sure that it's perfect. So um, don't test it out in a game, just recalibrate it. If you have to recalibrate it, like I said, it took me 25 times the first time to get it perfect do it 25 times because it's going to make a big difference to your overall experience in the end. So uh, again, once everything's calibrated though, I've tested out 14 games, I think. I only included four in this video just so it's not super long here, but the um, 14 games that I tested out were perfect. The shooting off screen to reload was perfect. The tracking on screen was perfect. Just don't have enough nice things to say about the AE light gun's performance within games. So that's pretty much gonna do it for this video today. I think we've covered every aspect of the AE light guns uh, as controllers for light gun games. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free to hit me up in the comment section or reach out to me directly. Always happy to help you guys out with any questions you have. Um, but that's gonna do it for today. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, smash the like button for me. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel because we do a ton of different videos based around retro gaming. We do product reviews like this one, gameplay demos, tutorials, just a lot of great content based around retro video games. So be sure to subscribe so you stay in the loop for future videos. And of course, I have those um, tutorial videos on how to set up the AE light gun controller with RetroPie as well as Botticera. So I'll actually put links in the description of this video so you can just jump down there and click through and be able to check those two videos out if you want some tips and to learn the process for actually setting these up. So that's gonna do it for today. Thanks for watching.